Dave Chappelle is a gem in the world of comedy. He's not just a comedian, he's an enigma. What makes him so special? It's like he's got this secret sauce that no one else has. His jokes make you laugh, but they also make you think. He's like that cool teacher who made history fun. <laughs> Dave doesn't just tell jokes, he tells stories that stick with you. The comedy scene is full of stars, from Kevin Hart to Joe Rogan. But there's only one Dave Chappelle, a once in a lifetime talent. His wit, his charm, and the way he takes on social issues with jokes puts him in his own league. I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. I am just saying that those pussies that they got, you know what I mean? <laughs> and even though critics haven't always been as nice as the fans have towards his recent shows, it's obvious that Dave has become the hero that comedy needs. Not the hero we deserved, but the hero we needed. Born in 1973, Dave grew up in Washington, D.C. His parents were highly educated professors, so being a genius was already in his DNA. But Dave was more than just smart, though. He was funny, too. When he was 14, he decided to be a comedian. Imagine being that young and making that big of a life decision and sticking with it. He packed his bags and moved to New York City. It was a big move to make, but Dave was special and he knew it. In 1992, he got his first shot on TV with Def Comedy Jam. He went up there, he killed it, and the audience loved him. He was a breath of fresh air and Hollywood noticed. In 1993, the year after his TV debut, he landed a role in Robin Hood Men in Tights. This was the start of something big. After Robin Hood Men in Tights, Dave kept working on his craft. His stand-up was getting better and better, but he didn't just tell jokes. He told stories. People could relate to them. They were real. He talked about growing up, about race, about everyday life. His style was different. And it wasn't just punchline. It was like sitting down with a friend who made you laugh until you cried. By the end of the 90s, Chappelle was becoming a household name. People knew he was funny, but they didn't know how big he was about to become. His actual real breakout moment was just around the corner. And it was going to change everything. In 2003, out came Chappelle's show. It was a game changer. A perfect mix of sketch comedy and stand-up comedy. The show was raw, absolutely hilarious, and even crossed a few lines. It was the biggest thing in pop culture. You know something's big when 20 years later, people are still quoting it. And modern problems require modern solutions. The show was way ahead of its time. Chappelle's show was more than just comedy. It was a mirror to society. It didn't shy away from racial issues. He made you laugh, but he also made you think. And the ratings were through the roof, and he was even nominated for an Emmy twice. Then, things took a left turn. Imagine being at the top of your game, and then suddenly, poof, you're gone. That's what happened with Dave and Chappelle's show. The show was a massive hit, but something was off. Dave was feeling the pressure. The fame, the money, and the spotlight, it was all too much. He was like a guy who won the lottery, but wasn't sure he wanted the prize. Then came the contract disputes. Comedy Central offered him a huge deal, $50 million. Dave wasn't happy with what was happening behind the scenes. To him, the show was losing its soul. Dad come and talk to me and he's like, name your price in the beginning. If it ever gets more expensive than the price you name, get out of there. Then one day, he just walked away. Just like that, left $50 million on the table and disappeared. People couldn't believe it. Was he crazy? Was he on drugs? No. Dave was just a guy trying to find his footing. Dave did something most of us can only dream of, but he decided he didn't want that dream anymore and took off to South Africa. Not for a vacation, but for reflection. He needed space to breathe. Back at home, the media was going crazy, but Dave didn't care. His own peace was more important. Whenever he was asked what happened, he talked about how fame was like a double-edged sword. Sure, it brought money and success, but at what cost? He felt like he was losing himself. The show was his baby, and it felt like it was slipping away. So he hit the pause button to figure out what really mattered. He chose peace over chaos. Eventually, his soul rested and his peace returned. Dave Chappelle made a comeback, but he didn't rush it. He took baby steps. At first, he did small gigs, popping up at comedy clubs unannounced, even just taking a mic and speaker to a random public place and started performing to anyone who wanted to listen. Can you imagine being out and suddenly Dave Chappelle shows up randomly and starts telling jokes? I'd be excited. His fans were excited. They missed him. But this Dave was different. This Dave was more grounded, more focused. Then in 2017, Netflix caught everyone off guard and released two new stand-up specials from Dave. It was like getting a surprise gift on a regular Tuesday. Everyone loved it. But that wasn't it. The specials kept coming. Equimanity, The Bird Revelation, Sticks and Stones, Dave was on fire. 
He won Grammy Awards for Best Comedy Album three years in a row and even won an Emmy for Outstanding Variety Special. Not too bad, huh? These specials weren't just jokes though. They were Dave's thoughts on everything. Politics, culture, society. He was a man who'd seen it all and wasn't afraid to talk about it. But the problem was though, not everyone was on board. Even though most people loved the new day for pushing things as far as he did, some people thought he pushed it too far. The gay community started accusing African American community of being homophobic for not supporting him. But what they didn't understand is that we were supporting him with our silence. <laughs> because we understood that this nigga was clearly lying. But here's the thing about Dave, he won't back down, and he didn't. He believed in what he was saying. He wasn't just some court jester, he was a commentator. The stage was his platform. He talked about race, LGBTQ issues, gun control, anything. To a place of my choosing, and a time of my choosing. And thirdly, you must admit that Hannah Gatsby is not funny. His haters didn't understand that his comedy was like a mirror. It reflected society's ups and downs. It was just a way to start new conversations and maybe, just maybe, change a few minds along the way. Dave didn't want to be a leader, he's a comedian, but his comedy became a tool for change. People started seeing him as more than just a funny guy. He was someone who spoke truth to power. He took issues head on, he made people think, his words carried weight. But he wasn't trying to be a hero, it just kind of happened. He's that guy who steps up without trying to. He speaks his mind and people listen. His comedy is his superpower. It's like his jokes are his armor and his words are his shield. But he's not Captain America. He's Dave Chappelle. He's not polished or perfect. He's real. He's raw. And that's why people connect with him. But sometimes the best heroes are the ones who don't try to be. They just are. His comedy split critics right down the middle. On the one side, you got people who think he's a genius. On the other side, people think his jokes went too far. They say he's insensitive and that he crosses lines that shouldn't be crossed. And what does Dave think about all this? He's not a guy that backs down, he stands by his work. In interviews, he talks about how comedy should be a safe space for risky ideas. He thinks that if something is funny, it's worth saying. But he's also not here to make everyone happy. He knows that's impossible. He's here to speak his truth. And if that pisses some people off, then so be it. In a world that takes itself way too seriously, Dave brought laughter. Voices like Dave's are rare. He's shown that comedy is about life. It's about the human experience in all its messy glory. So what's the takeaway? Maybe it's that voices like Dave's need to be cherished. They need to be heard, even if we don't always agree. Because at the end of the day, it's voices like Dave Chappelle's that keep the conversation going. They challenge us. They entertain us. They enrich us. And in a world that can sometimes feel divided and disconnected, that's a voice worth listening to.